I want to bring a word of exhortation. Come with me to Luke chapter 7. Amen. Luke chapter 7. Amen. Amen. I read from verse 11. Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called May, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd. And when they came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Amen. Amen. And said to her, Do not weep. When he came and then he came and touched the open coffin. And those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young no man, I said to you, arise. So he who was there sat up and began to speak. And he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all the Judea and all the surrounding region. The message is do not weep. Amen. Amen. Do not weep. When men weep, it is out of a sense of loss. When men weep, it is out of the sense of pain. When men weep, it is out of a feeling of loss. In most situations of life, we weep. Some may weep openly, others may not weep openly. Some may just gnash their teeth. Some may, out of the pains that they are going through, end up in something more serious, in depression. Some may bottle up whatever they may be going through, and sometimes they talk to themselves. I have seen people while they are walking along the road, they will be talking to themselves. Some may bottle up, only waiting for a time to explode. But oftentimes we are so afflicted and attacked that we may not even be able to talk. The passage I just read from Luke chapter 7 is a, a passage of a woman. The Bible does not tell us her name, but the Bible describes her as a widow. Not only that she is a widow, and she is a widow with only one son. Having lost her husband, the only person that 
could stand around her and support her was her only son. But not just that son. The Bible does not go on to tell us what happened. But suddenly, the enemy struck. And that only son, who would have served as her husband, who would have put her backbone in life, who would be the only thing that when she remembers, she will take courage. That support of her life was taken away by the attack of the enemy. I'm 
Peter, he could see through the life of that woman because he knew the end right from the very beginning. And the Bible says that when he saw her, he had compassion on her. And I want to tell you that tonight the Lord is looking at us, not as men look at us, but he is looking at us with the heart of compassion. Compassion is not only sympathy, it is even more than empathy. It is him stepping into our situation. And I want to tell you that the Lord of Lords is stepping into your situation tonight. When he looked at that woman, he said to her, Woman, do not weep. Stop crying. Stop weeping. Stop complaining. Stop fighting. My brother Joe, the Lord is saying, do not move. This is not a loss. It is a pain. We are celebrating the life of grace. We are here not to move. We are here to celebrate the worship of Jesus, the glory of God, the victory through battles. She has leveled, she has won the race, she has kept the faith, she has fought the good fight. It is time to rest. There is time for everything. Sister Grace is at rest. No more injections, no more drugs, no more pains. No more heat. No more struggle. Do not weep. Rather celebrate and give glory unto the Lord. For he gave and he has taken glory and honor. He wants to do it, my Lord. She is not dead. She is asleep. For when we say good night, there is hope of the good morning. The morning of the glorious resurrection is coming. Because he has given us hope. He has given us living hope. That's the number one last week. We are born again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so long as that man, tomb is empty in Jerusalem. So long as his word abides, we are looking forward to that glorious morning of his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Do not weep. For the glorious morning is coming. Even now, victory is won. As Jesus said to Martha, the brother will be that day. Sister Grace will be that day. He said, Do you believe this? Martha said, Yes, I believe. I believe that he will rise in the resurrection. And Jesus said, No, resurrection is not just a doctrine, it is a personality. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Whoever that believes in me, though he may live, though he may die, shall live. And whoever believes and is alive shall never die. He said, but Do you believe this? Tonight, we have had testimonies of the life of Sister Grace. And I know that in this congregation and even for tomorrow, people have come from across this town. East, West, North, and South to celebrate this life because we have seen the glory of God show forth in this world. And when Jesus came there, he touched the bed. 
and those who were carrying the ox stood still. And I believe that everybody around that coffin stood still. You know one thing? Heaven stood still. Are you there in there? God is, on, is not only moved by our situations, God is able to write to break into our situations. He is definitely standing still to attend to our issues. So, the Lord is mindful of what is happening. He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. When heaven stood still, there was a waiting of a command, the word, the word of power, the word of life. Jesus said, the word I speak to you is spirit and it is life. As it was the day, the spiritual The bondage and the yoke of the enemy, spiritual forces collapsed. Jesus looked at the corpse and said, Young man, arise. I don't know where you may be now. I don't know what may be holding you. By the word that is life and spirit, by the word of the Lord of Lords, by the word of Jesus Christ, I commanded the yoke to be broken. Amen. Yeah. 
Tonight, Jesus is opening up his hand and saying, Come on to me. Of who are weeping. Of who are troubled. Of who have never and they are laboring and they are traveling. And he says, I will take you to the rocks. I will take you to the I will help you. Why not come out to the gates and move for Jesus? Ask him, Lord, to move for something. Stay in the world of life. And let that be. A turn around. A resurrection. A restoration. A recovery. And a whole world. Thank you. 
invite God's people. Why not point your hands towards them as we commit them to God's care? Oh God, our Father, you are the immortal, the invisible God, the only wise. You dwell in light in a festival gift from our eyes and is most blessed, most glorious. The ancient of days, almighty, victorious, we praise your great name. We thank you that you are the source and sustainer of life and you've given life to us, not just physical life, but life within by the blood of the Lord Jesus. And like the servant Peter says, it will not be perishable things, such as silver or gold, that were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to us by our forefathers, for the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blood. That is what we celebrate tonight. In your daughter and our sister, Grace, not a physical life that you gave us, but a life ransomed, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We thank you for her life. We thank you for the work of your spirit in her life. And we thank you that ours was not a wasted life. It was a fruitful life. We thank you. Lord, we believe that the time you appointed for her has come. And you have led her home. We thank you for those who gave to her to travel with her, her beloved husband, her brother Joseph, whom you have made a pillar of support and encouragement to your church. We thank you for the life they shared together, for the battles they fought together with you holding their hands. We thank you for the time they shed tears together. We thank you for the time they celebrated together. Lord, there is a gap in his life, but not the absence of God. Therefore, Lord, we know that even though you have taken for him his beloved wife, you have not left him. She is with you, and therefore in your presence, both he and her, are together. We thank you. We thank you for the children. We thank you for comfort and for Tosin, whom you brought together in her lifetime. And we thank you that through them you brought Zoe and Nathaniel, that she could live to see her grandchildren. We are grateful to you. Not many do. And we thank you that not only has she seen them fruitful in this way, but walking in the ways of the Lord. What greater joy than to see our children walking in the ways of the Lord. We thank you. Thank you for joy and for faith, whom you also brought together in her life. Thank you for our brother, Joseph the Great. This family is united around you. Yours is the strong power. And your word tells us that underneath us are the everlasting arms. Let that be the experience of this family. Amen. Let none of them turn away from this thing. Amen. Lord, take them beyond the distance that your daughter has reached. What she could not do, let them do more than that. Amen. Father, let the fruit of our prayer begin to manifest the life of the family. Lord, we tell you that they are not praying as those who have no hope. We rejoice that Jesus is our hope. Lord, we tell you that your word has come to be so powerful tonight to be assured of that in Jesus we are alive forever. Lord, we tell you that we trust them to you. For each of them, hold their hands. For each of them, let them know your embrace in a new way. For each of them, bring them into an activity because your word says the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. Let them know your friendship in a new and deeper way. Lord, we 
pray that her exit will not be the exit of bad children in this world. Lord, let the power that raised Jesus from the dead, let the power of the Holy Spirit that takes from beyond ourselves be at work in their lives. We shall hear that God has not departed from this world. The Lord will continue to uphold you. The Lord will give you songs in the night. The Lord will cause you to arrive with His power in the name of the Lord Jesus.
very important for us because of those who will be on their way tomorrow. God bless us as we comply in Jesus' name. Let me, on behalf of all of us, appreciate all our fathers in God who are here today. I begin with the Prime Minister and the head of our church, the Most Reverend Dr. Henry Shukudu Mulukuba. Baba, you are welcome. You are welcome to the Baba. You are welcome to the Chapel of the Resurrection, the first university chapel in Nigeria. Welcome, Baba. We also appreciate Mama Nigeria, Mrs. Angela Udukuba. Baba, you are welcome to the Baba. You are welcome to the Chapel of the Resurrection. We want to appreciate the Archbishop of Ibadan, the Ecclesiastical Province. He started this half of it. But we thank God that the Lord took control. We appreciate most reverend Abiodu Olaoni and his wife. We appreciate the most reverend Malcolm Akiyeni, retired bishop of the Golden Dowsi. We have with us today our Father in God, the most reverend Emmanuel Ebunu from Lokoja. Baba, you are welcome. We want to appreciate the retired bishop of Akubu, most reverend Gabriel Akubidi, our Baba Akubidi. We appreciate both of you. We want to appreciate the right reverend Dr. Dawson Atene, the Lord Bishop of Akubu Dawson, and his wife. Thank you for coming. The right reverend Jacob Bada and Mama Bada from Akubu Dawson. We appreciate you, the right reverend Paitos Fajeri Wepo. We appreciate him, the right reverend Akitu Wepo Kona from Bada South Dawson. We appreciate the right reverend Dr. Dobiru Aladu Pepe Amama Aladu Pepe. Thank you, the Lord Bishop of Ibadan North Dawson. We appreciate the right reverend Dr. Babatude Ubaru. Baba, you are welcome, God bless you, sir. The right reverend, you are the people in the Methodist of Nigeria, Reverend Nelson. Thank you, sir, for coming. The right reverend, Dr. Oluke, the auditor of the Lord Nelson, Mama, Mama, Dr. Auditor. Thank you for coming. The right reverend, Dr. Emmanuel, Adeline, Eva Nelson. We appreciate you, Gabby. Thank you for coming. The right reverend Timothy or not twenty Methodist Church that thousand to Shalom and his wife Doctor Olatunji. Thank you, our former chaplain here. The right reverend Alfi Kolubo Wale Ethiopia Mama Evangelist Ethiopia. We are both welcome in Jesus' name. We appreciate the right reverend Oru Pumi Akinade of Ife Dawson and his wife, Mama Ife. We appreciate both of you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate the right reverend Samuel Ogude of Eba West and Mama Eba West. Thank you, sir, for coming. We appreciate the right reverend Dr. Cornelius Adabada of the East West. Ah, Mama, Olusola, thank you for coming. God bless you. We appreciate the right reverend who comes. Ah, Tonali, Mama, Tonali, Methodist Church, Nigeria, University, Dawson. Thank you for coming. God bless you, sir. We appreciate the right reverend Charles Ayo, Adeni, Methodist Church, Nigeria, Yewa Dawson. The right reverend Albert, Olon, Made. Methodist Church Nigeria Open Dance. We are welcome. We appreciate the right reverend Dr. Echo Babatuji. He was here with us, the Lord Bishop of Osun Dance. And his wife, we appreciate you. We want to appreciate the Bishop elect of Ajayi Kauda Dance. Venerable Collins, Baba Lola, thank you for coming, sir. We want to appreciate the most reverend Dr. Jehovah, Mr. Wang, a 
that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good work. To do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his heart. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. The Lord be with you. Please let me tell you, inform you of the updates on Bishop Omari. Please, okay. Amen. It's been attended to, there is no problem. It's alright. And uh, at the rest of all, you will be with us tomorrow. God bless you.
Zai. Muito bem, gente.